What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be continuing with our logging series and now in this video we'll look at loggers, handlers, and formatters. So in the first video I basically gave you an overview of what logging does and we only used the root logger. So now we're going to be creating multiple logger objects and We'll also learn about handlers and formatters to allow us to configure each of the loggers. So let's just dive right into this video. So the first thing I'll do is import logging and sys. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to be creating logging objects known as loggers. So in the first video, we used logging pretty much to do everything. And I told you guys that the logging itself creates a logger object in the background and that's the root logger. So now what we're going to do is create multiple loggers so we could give it multiple configurations. So instead of just relying on the root logger we'll be creating multiple different logger objects and the way it works in logging is it's a hierarchical system. So the root logger will actually create children known as loggers and we can configure these children loggers. All right. So this is how you create multiple loggers. You pretty much just write in the code logging.getLogger and you give it a name. So in this case, we'll create our first logger and we'll call it logger1 and we'll create another logger known as logger2. And we'll save both to logger and logger2 respectively. Now when you create these logger child objects, there's one thing you should know and this actually is something that can cause headaches. It's not a bug, but it's just the way the logging system was created. There are a lot of nuances and sort of detailed configurations that you need to pay attention to, or else you're going to run into a lot of various strange behaviors, what seemingly look like bugs. So I'll explain some of the things you need to configure before you could properly use handlers and loggers or before you can properly use loggers. All right, so whenever you're creating a logger, you always have to set the level to the lowest level. So here I've created multiple loggers, and what I'm going to do eventually is set them to the lowest levels. That's number one. Number two is if you're going to use multiple loggers, you have to use handlers to do all the configurations. So I'll show you exactly what handlers are as well. So basically you need to set a general level to these loggers and then you need to set these levels on handlers to be more specific as to what you're looking for. So all the configurations are going to be done via handlers, but you need to set a general level to the loggers. So that might sound a little confusing, but as I go through the code, you guys will get a much clearer understanding of what I'm talking about. All right, so I've created two loggers and this important note is just telling you always create handlers and set logger alert level to the lowest, which is something we just went through. All right, so let's talk about handlers now. Handlers basically forward events from loggers to outputs, uh, such as console, file, or syslog servers. So basically, they're going to be forwarding the outputs to either files or the console, which is a SD out or SD error. And the loggers can have multiple handlers assigned to them, letting you log events to multiple destinations. So basically, each handler allows you to direct the logging message to a certain place. So if I create one handle called file handler, it will direct all of them to a specific file, which I specify within the file handler object I create. Or you can have it to the console. So I could create a specific handler to send files to the console. And I could also do that to the S uh, syslog server. So I'm not really too familiar with syslog server. This is something system administrators often use apparently. All right, so basically once again, handlers allow you to send your events or your logging info to specific places. And here we created two loggers. One logger can have multiple handlers and you could configure each handler to do something in terms of your level and to output your information to a specific place, whether it be a file or the console output. So just going to reiterate, there's different types of handlers. There's a file handler, which allows you to log to files. Then there's something called a stream handler, which allows you to log to system standard out or standard error. So standard out and standard error are just your console or your Python console. So when you print messages or all the outputs you see are usually 
information from the standard out, the standard error piped into your shell. So if you see your Python shell, all that info, that's your standard out, standard error. Or if you see your your shell or the command prompt and the, all the info there, that's your standard out and standard error. All right, so the first thing, like we said, we're going to always set the logger alert level to the lowest level. So that's the first thing we'll do. We're only going to work with logger because we don't need logger one and logger two. In this case, we can make multiple handlers for logger and that'll be more than enough. So we'll work with logger. We're going to set the level to logging.debug, which is the lowest level. And now we can use the handlers to sort of configure the levels as well. All right, so now I'm going to create multiple handlers. So first we'll create handler one and it's going to be a file handler. So the way we do that is logging.filehandler. Now we're going to give it a specific name, in this case, info.log and the mode. Uh, the mode is append. So basically, instead of rewriting the text file or the log file, every time we add information, we're just going to append. So it will be infinitely growing as the time goes by and as we log more events. All right, so we have handler one, and now we can set the event of handler one to logging.info. So this is the best part about logging is that you could create all these handlers very easily and you can have information flowing in multiple places very easily and you can configure what kind of information you want to flow into those places. So here, handler one will set level to logging.info. Now we're going to create another handler, info.log2, and we're going to set this level to logging.error. So we created two handlers and now we have to attach these handlers to our logger. So that can be easily done with logger.addHandler, handler1, logger.addHandler, logger2. So now that we have done all this, we've created two handlers and we've attached them to our logger. Anytime our logger will output a message, a logging message, so in this case it's logger.info, your handlers are going to check if it's at the appropriate level. And if it is, it's going to output it to the destination specified within the handler. So we have info log one or info log and info log two. The first one logs anything from info level and the uh, second one only logs from the error level. So this info message will only be logged to handler one and not handler two. All right, so I'm not sure, did I run this? Actually, let me just go back. So let me rerun these cells. I right, ran that, and this, okay, ran this, okay, now so we're going to run this, create the loggers, and okay, now we're going to send the message. All right, so now we sent the message, so let me check. Okay, so we have info1 and info2, so info1 should log the message, and info message, and info2 since the level is error, there should be no message. So that's exactly how we expected it to be. All right, so we've logged two different messages to two different places just by running one message, logger.info. So now what I'm going to show you is stream handler. So we're going to create another handler called stream handler. And instead of logging to the files, we're going to be logging to SD out or system standard out. And it's the same sort of a mechanism you create a handler in this case we're using stream handler instead of file handler and we're going to set the level so we'll set it to info so that we can actually see an output and we'll add this handler to uh, logger objects so we're we've been using logger we're going to add our third handler all right so we've done all that now we have two messages logger.info and logger.critical and this handler should actually be outputting both and since it's going to be outputting to the standard out in Jupyter Notebook, we should see everything within the shell. So I run this. All right, so within the shell, we'll see the output, info message and critical message. So that's how simple it is. We've created three handlers to one logger and we're outputting the message and different levels to various places. So now the next thing, formatting, we could actually also configure each handler to have a specific format. So we've gone over formatting in the first two videos, and now we're just going to see how we can add them to handlers. So we have a formatter and formatter two here, which is just two different formatting configurations. And all this should be stuff we went over in the first video or the first two videos. 
So check that out if you guys don't remember. But basically, this is just how we want to format our output messages. So I've created two formatters, and I'm using logging.formatter to create the format configuration. Now, if we want our handler to incorporate this formatting, all we need to do is set formatter. So a handler 3setformatter formatter allows us to incorporate this format configuration. So I run that. Oops, I forgot to run these two. So I'll just run these two. All right. And now our handler 3 is incorporating this configuration. Now, once again, I'm just going to be using logger.info and logger.critical. And if you guys forgot, I'll handler 3 outputs to SD out. So we should be seeing the output here within our cell. So I'll run this. And as you can see, the formatting has completely changed. We're using time, level name, and message. So time, level name, and message. Now we can easily just switch the formatting to formatter 2. So here we'll use formatter 1, and now we'll use a simpler format called formatter 2. And now, by using logger.info, or by running logger.info and logger.critical, you'll see the new messages are incorporating the new formatting uh, configuration. So that's it for this video. So we've went over how to create logger objects, uh, handlers, file handlers, and stream handlers, and how to format those handlers. And now with this, you guys should be pretty good to go with logging some, some of your basic projects. Now there are a couple more things I might go into, which is having configuration files. So you could just load the configuration files and how to deal with um, loggers with various modules. So those are a couple more things that are more slightly advanced that I may go into depending, I guess, on the feedback from this video and if it's necessary. So hopefully this clears up any confusion you had with logging on a basic level and I would uh, love any feedback. So, all right guys, I will see you guys in the next video.